Love movies? Want reviews? You've come to the right place! I'm Chris Wing, here to bring the review for you! And today, we're going back to a galaxy far, far away in a time before a new hope with Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Rogue One is directed by Gareth Edwards and stars an impressively diverse cast that includes Felicity Jones, Diego Luna, Ben Mendelsohn, Donnie Yen, Alan Tudyk, Mads Mikkelsen and Forrest Whitaker. The film focuses on Jin Erso, a rebel soldier who forms and leads an army into battle against the Galactic Empire to retrieve and steal the plans for their devastatingly powerful weapon, the Death Star. Essentially, the plot is the first two paragraphs of the opening title crawl from A New Hope. Although this is actually the fifth overall Star Wars spin-off, preceded by the infamous Holiday Special, the two Ewok TV movies, and the animated Clone Wars film, it is the first in a new series consisting of three anthology films set to be released in between installments of the main saga. And while it feels somewhat surreal to be excited for a Star Wars prequel again, Rogue One provides a lot of good reasons to be, but it definitely isn't a flawless masterpiece. The film starts off strong, wasting no time setting its tone, getting its intriguing story going, and treating the audience to a lot of early world building. There's about four different planets shown to us in just the first 15 minutes. The massive cast all do perfectly fine work in their respective roles, but unfortunately, the screenplay never really develops or even presents most of the characters with compelling personalities. That is with the exception of Yen as a blind warrior with unwavering belief in the Force, and Tudok as the voice of a trustworthy, if slightly paranoid robot companion known as K2SO. The latter feels a bit C-3PO light, but both characters are always fun to watch, providing bursts of comic relief that prove to be both effective and necessary in preventing the film's gloomy atmosphere from being too overwhelming. Indeed, in what is a bold and risky move for the saga, this is the darkest and grittiest the franchise has ever been. It's the first time I've ever seen a Star Wars movie that looks and feels less like a sci-fi fantasy and more like an intergalactic war film. And rightly so, taking place between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope, the Empire have all but taken over the galaxy, leaving many planets and civilians living in a state of despair and hopelessness. This gloomier approach definitely works well though, and fits more appropriately and effectively with the narrative, but it isn't always consistent with its impact. There were times during the middle hour where I honestly got a little bored, as there are moments where the film moves along a bit too leisurely, without packing enough character development or urgency to help sustain tension. As an overall result, it also tends to lack that certain spark or magic that's always been there with previous installments. When viewing and comparing this new wave of Star Wars pictures, Rogue One may be the more daring and ambitious film, but The Force Awakens is far more entertaining. Despite all its problems during the first two acts, the movie rebounds and recovers exceedingly well with its final 45 minutes, which features some truly exhilarating action sequences, some of the best I've seen from the saga in years. These, along with much of the rest of the film, are further enhanced by some outstanding cinematography and glorious visual effects. That is with the exception of some moments where the picture recreates returning characters from A New Hope, for example, Guy Henry and Steven Stanson act as the body and voice for Grand Toff Markin, while his face is digitally rendered to match the late Peter Cushing's appearance from the original. It's certainly noble in its intention, but just looks horribly unnatural in execution. Mixed with a number of John Williams' iconic motifs, Michael Cicchino also contributes to the proceedings with an excellent musical score. I was worried that it wasn't going to be the same without Williams, but he really did a great job here. And last but not least, Vader. His screen time is decidedly minimal, but it's also the absolute definition of less is more, as his intimidating presence is felt in each of his moments, especially during an incredible climactic scene that both closes out the film and connects it to the start of A New Hope with fantastic results. For the first in the anthology film series, Rogue One A Star Wars Story has its flaws and misfires, some of which are bigger than others, but its interesting premise, dark atmosphere, callbacks and continuity with the original, and splendid action still make it a perfectly solid entry in the saga, 
and a fine stopgap until episode 8 arrives. I'll score it an 8 out of 10. A very satisfying and enjoyable film for sure, and I'll happily welcome more spin-offs after it, but I just didn't think it was as amazing as it could have been. I'd love to know what you thought though if you've seen it, so please feel free to let me know in the comments. And please like and share if you enjoyed this review, and be sure to follow me on social media if you want to keep up to date. I'm finished for the year now, but I'll be back in 2017, once again here to bring the review for you. Until then, I'm Chris Wing, thank you all for watching, and have a very Merry Christmas.